Okay, so <clears throat> we were discussing about uh, this uh, gas turbine blades. What material is used to make these blades? So we discussed yesterday in uh, that super alloys uh, are used to make these blades of gas turbines. So we also understood the gas turbines typically face creep conditions uh, inside the uh, turbine, and because of that. Uh, we need super alloys which can uh, retain their strength hardness even at elevated temperature we also did some analysis on the microstructure of these uh, super alloys uh, like uh, what is typically the range uh, or wh why these super alloys they they are able to resist creep we also looked at why nickel is used because nickel does not change its uh, crystal structure over the uh, wide range of temperature. Now, with that background, we know that uh, super alloys are the material. So now, material selection is almost clear in case of gas turbines. That super alloys will be the material uh, which are to be used to make these turbine turbine blades. <coughs> so. Uh, the super alloys, since they are nickel based, um, here in this slide, what I am showing is a composition for one of the super alloys. So, super alloys, uh, they don't have a straightforward name, rather, they have a nomenclative name like MAR247. So, you can see the typical uh, elemental composition of this super alloy. You can see nickel is the balance, means it is the major alloying element. Then, of course, we have generous quantities of cobalt, chromium, uh, tungsten, molybdenum, tantalum, carbon, aluminium, titanium, hafnium, boron, zirconium. The density of the super alloy is 8.5 gram per cc. So, this is similar to what it is for uh, the uh, steel. The steel and cast iron, they are also in that range around 7.9 to 8.2. Uh, gram per cc but what is important here that the fatigue life of these uh, super alloy material is, is very significantly high and that too at elevated temperature so if we look at the uh, temperature pressure curve in the uh, gas turbine starting from the compressor so this is the compressor unit and then here is the combustion chamber and then here is the turbine <coughs> so the pressure here, you see the maximum pressure is in the turbine, uh, uh, in the compressor unit here, okay. where uh, air is compressed because of the multi stage compression, and then uh, the fuel is ignited here. And because of this ignition, the temperature peaks here up to 1500 degree centigrade. This is within the compression chamber. So, turbine is placed after the compression chamber. So the temperature range here is 1100 to say uh, 900 degree centigrade. So now we know that at this temperature, super alloy material will be used to make this turbine blade. So if you look at the cross section of the super alloy blade, so it is not a straightforward cross section, rather it has multiple features on it. First and foremost, since it is a uh, it is an object or it is a product which will be utilizing uh, flowing uh, hot gases to rotate, so that is why it is very important to look at this aerofoil design. So first consideration here is aerofoil uh, design. Okay. So, this is the aerofoil design of the turbine blade. So, that when air passes over it or hot gases they pass over it. So, uh, these blades they are able to rotate in the turbine. Then, uh, another next important uh, feature on these uh, turbine blades are you will see there are a lot of holes. Here, it is known as film cooling holes. So, second is cooling holes. So, 
pulling holes are required for the purpose of pulling because uh, with holes the capacity increases so that is why more heat may be lost since increased surface area increases the chance of convection and then uh, you have a dovetail this dovetail design is there so what is dovetail design so this dovetail is basically used to secure this uh, turbine blade on to the rotor because on the rotor there will be multiple blades here just we are looking at one of the blade but on the rotor there will be multiple blades and uh, this dovetail this is uh, a similar what you might have uh, made in some carpentry experiment earlier in some earlier class so this is like where this dovetail gets locked up so this part uh, is secured on to the rotor using this dovetail type of design so while rotating it stays in its place so these are some important uh, i'm not highlighting all in fact these are some of the very important features of the turbine blades of course one more feature is there which uh, is regarding the uh, surface of the blade okay uh, which is coated with a thermal barrier coating okay so thermal barrier coating as the name itself is suggesting so this coatings are used to you see uh, to minimize the heat uh, from the surroundings to go on to the core of this blade so now we understand these gas turbine blades they are not simple or very straightforward products these are complex products with several constraints on these features which need to be developed so that is why the manufacturing process have to be selected accordingly and on top of it we are dealing with super alloys as i already discussed super alloys are materials which uh, can retain their hardness and strength at elevated temperature now you can understand when you are dealing with such a material which exhibits very high strength in even in very complex operating conditions looking it from the manufacturing perspective so of course you want to cast it you want to uh, you know forge it you want to machine it so no routine processes will not suffice because in routine processes we are dealing with only alloys not super alloys be it steel alumi aluminum copper or their alloys and so on but for super alloys in fact we need some advanced manufacturing processes so we will be catering to only the specific process used to deal with these super alloys which are used to further make the gas turbine blades so going ahead here now uh, i'd like to highlight here some commercial names of some of the super alloys which are used so i have been talking since yesterday about super alloys but what are these so super alloys they have wide variety available okay like we have rain super alloys we have uh, udimit 720 in konal then as we have hest alloy okay not mentioned here but it is there again in in konal we have Uh, several grades starting 617 625 690 690x 718 725 so these numbers are because these numbers are as per the international nomenclature these numbers have been defined based on the composition of the respective alloy and uh, of course they cannot be changed the numbers cannot be changed but this number corresponds to a specific composition of that super alloy like this 690x grade this grade is more popular in uh, nuclear uh, power plants or nuclear applications okay. others are more for aerospace or gas turbines okay and then of course we have those coatings which i just mentioned thermal barrier coatings which are again alumina uh, alumina and they are also reinforced sometimes with zirconia we'll see some more details now if you see uh, some more details about the gas turbines so 
the gas turbine blades this is the inter external shape most all mostly these gas turbines look like this so this cross section it has that aerofoil design as i discussed and this is that dovetail okay and this is the internal core which might be used sometimes then here you can see mechanical properties of a super alloy udimit 720 so you can see the tensile strength it even increases to a certain uh, at a certain temperature range between 700 to 500 to 60 degree because at these temperatures the super alloy experiences uh, precipitate uh, formation and precipitate hardening takes place but you see they are able to retain temperature but now some latest super alloys they can even retain uh, their strength and hardness even beyond 900 say or 800 degree centigrade and this is like for rain uh, at this is the typical uh, you can see the uh, elemental composition where again we can see nickel is the balance which is again nickel based now moving ahead to other aspects of the super alloy as i discussed earlier super alloy uh, this gas turbine blades made of super alloy they experience very complex operating environments will complex service environments so these service uh, environment or complex loads include the loads like centrifugal by centrifugal because the uh, average uh, so this gas turbine if it, it rotates okay in this range this is very high speeds this is just i am telling average even in some specific conditions the value may go high so you can understand that at such high rotating speeds the the uh, centrifugal forces coming onto the blades is very high then of course there is thermal loads which we now understand the operating conditions are uh, demanding temperatures it 800 degree to 1000 degree centigrade the microstructure of this uh, or performance should be very stable and since these are not static parts they are rotating at high speed so there are a lot of vibration there is fatigue loading okay because of high speed rotation there are fatigue loads creep is there creep as i already discussed then fluctuating pressure field pressure fields because pressure fields may change up or depending on the ambient condition mechanical stress as high as 80% of the uts may be there there will be a lot uh, of opportunities of wear and corrosion or surface degradation so you can see that one single product like we are here we are talking of gas turbine blades it experiences so many so many different type of loads or so many external factors which basically you know influence the uh, operation of these blades so that is why what is the reason that these blades are made up of super alloys and then manufacturing processes are tailored to you know cater that super alloy material so i'll show a video here uh, about some more details uh, of the super alloy okay so you have to play So I hope with this this uh, volume this uh, sound is coming. Please confirm from the video. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, can you please increase the volume? Okay.
Uh, so I hope this video gives you some insight about uh, the aspects of uh, gas turbine blades. So the the thing that we discussed yesterday regarding gamma and gamma prime uh, in the super alloys plays a very important role. And this video uh, basically told us that starting from the macro structure going to the micro structure, then the nano structure of the uh, blades. So all the elements, how they pair up, uh, which elements go in the gamma uh, phase, which go in the gamma prime phase, and so on. So the ultimate requirement here is basically to perform the function at elevated temperature in condition I mentioned earlier. So the function here for the gas turbine blade is to extract power, okay, generate energy. So now we'll look at what are the constraints here. So now we are constrained to super alloy material, which are nickel based. Okay. So we are constrained to this. We are also constrained to the shape that is three dimension hollow plus of course there is aerofoil. Mass of one blade. So this is for uh, one blade. So this typical, the mass is mass should be 1.3 to 1.2 kilograms. The minimum section thickness should be 1.5 millimeters tolerance. It should be 0.1. Surface roughness should be 2.0 microns. Tolerance 0.1 millimeters. Batch size say of 1,000. Now, uh, why these constraints are important to understand because Based on the constraints, we will select the manufacturing process, we'll select uh, the casting process, we'll select the forging process, machining process, okay? And of course, we have to take care of the tolerance of whatever is produced, surface roughness, whatever is produced, and the economic batch size for that particular process. We cannot select a very fancy process, which can say only say produce one or say 10 blades, then the process becomes very expensive. But a process which batch size of say 1000 will be sufficient. So we have technical constraints, we have quality constraints to manage, and we have economic constraints. So any selection of any manufacturing process will will <coughs> be uh, you know based on managing these technical constraints, quality constraints, and economic constraints. And overall objective is to of course minimize cost of production. That is always the objective of uh, say you know most of the uh, manufacturing process so minimize the cost means you maximize the profit so any manufacturing process we want to do this and to do this we have a free variable that is we have to select that manufacturing process that is what this course is all about where we have specific products and we are selecting the manufacturing process starting from primary process, going forward to secondary processes. So going ahead, we'll see an overview. So this is just an overview, but we will jump into details of each of these process. Uh, for the gas turbine blades, we know the material we are handling is super alloy. which of course is nickel based. So the casting process which is used, it is not sand casting. 
sand casting we all have read but for gas turbine blades we used directionally <coughs> solidified casting using investment casting process so we will see what is directional solidification so directional solidification just to give a brief idea it is a method of solidifying castings in which grains they grow in a particular orientation so all the grains they are aligned in a particular direction hence it is known as directionally solidified casting and as we are looking towards very high uh, surface finish or very low surface roughness additionally the tolerance values are also very tight so if you go back to the selection of process based on surface roughness so you'll observe that sand casting cannot manage that sand casting produces very rough surfaces which cannot be used directly i mean you can do sand casting but then you have to do secondary processing surface finishing in order to bring uh, the surface roughness value to the acceptable value for gas turbine blade which will basically increase the cost of the process drastically so why not choose a process of casting which can give directly give us that value of so investment casting process i'm sure you might have read about this in your undergraduate level but we'll study some more details about that from a different perspective now for gas turbine blades and whatever for hollow sections for whatever hollow sections are produced so ceramic cores using computer integrated manufacturing is used then uh, moving ahead to the deformation process which is cast cast uh, products generally they have poor microstructures poor in the sense of from the perspective of mechanical performance because in these uh, uh, directly cast structures there may be <laughs> chance of porosity some inclusion and so on i mean it is very less but still it is there but the microstructure is not refined so the refining of the microstructure is done using a forging process and this is not a, uh, a, a press forging process that uh, you have read earlier but it is a hip process so what is hip hip stands for hot uh, isostatic pressing hot isostatic pressing so we will see what is hip then going ahead to machining processes so of course we need to make these holes for cooling as shown here cooling holes and vanes and the material now we are dealing this is super alloy so traditional machining processes may not be of any use we cannot do a traditional drilling on super alloy so we will be going forward with non conventional or you call them as non traditional machining processes like edm laser and so on then uh, to create the final surface finish of course surface processing is required so we all know what is grinding i'm sure everyone might have seen a grinding wheel but in this case we are not using a simple grinding method rather we will be using creep feed grinding so creep feed grinding is a grinding process where feed is kept very high and we'll see the details of the cfg creep feed grinding process which is a surface finishing process used and lastly once everything is done we need to provide a thermal barrier coating thermal barrier coating here to uh, basically uh, minimize heat, the heat transfer from the surroundings to the core of the blade so this is applied at the last so this talks of surface related thing surface engineering of the gas turbine blade and of course this is the primary manufacturing process this is also primary manufacturing process then this this here is the secondary manufacturing process so any product okay any product it undergoes primary manufacturing processes then secondary manufacturing processes lastly the surface is finished so uh, 
the scope now what going forward will be discussion detailed discussion on casting process specifically for gas turbine then hip process then overview of some machining process then with this creep feed grinding process and lastly we'll discuss about coating so that is what we are now going to discuss going forward so just to summarize what specifically i will be discussing uh, related to gas turbine blades in my slides so i will be discussing about the primary processing in terms of investment casting vacuum casting single crystal casting then hot ice setting pressing which is the hip process that we have discussed in terms of um, uh, secondary manufacturing processes i will be discussed about discussing about edm edg cfg that is creep feed grinding edg okay edm we will be discussing a short overview of additive manufacturing used in gas turbine blades using selective laser sintering of course for drilling of holes we will discuss about laser beam drilling and lastly for coating we will discuss thermal barrier coating so all in all what we are going to discuss is this this is the sequence of manufacturing processes for gas turbine blades dealing every time we are dealing here with the material which is the super alloy now we know why super alloy is used which are nickel based because super alloys they offer high strength high hardness even at elevated temperature they can resist creep okay so now starting with the first one uh, regarding the investment casting process uh, so metal casting uh, we all know i'll give some overview of what, what it is so we have already read what is casting so casting it is one of the fundamental manufacturing process in which it is a shaping process in which we create a mold cavity so the mold cavity can be created by a pattern so pattern can be permanent pattern it can be expendable pattern for example if you have done the experiment with sand casting so you have used a wooden pattern uh of course uh, for investment casting process as we will be dealing in more detail it is the wax as used as the pattern material so uh, that pattern is used to create shape of that cavity and then what we do is we pour the molten metal in into that cavity and then we allow that molten metal to solidify in that cavity and after completion of solidification we <laughs> remove the mold so mold this can also be permanent or expendable so for investment casting process mold is expendable pattern is also expendable casting it is known to produce very complex shaped products as shown here like in, in engine blocks okay engine cowlings okay so casting processes uh, involves these three basic steps as i just discussed it is pouring of the molten metal to the mold allowing the molten metal to solidify and then removing the solidified part of the mold so coming now to specifically on the investment casting process so investment casting process it is a two step process the first step is to create a wax pattern so wax pattern can be created using a permanent mold which can be uh, by injection molding process where you inject molten wax into that mold okay to create a wax pattern as shown here this is uh, the first step almost then you assemble these wax patterns okay on an assembly tree so this means that process can produce multiple uh, multiple products in one go so that suffices the economic condition of selection of this process then uh, once the patterns are loaded onto the tree they are dipped in a slurry coating 
So this is a stucco, stucco slurry coating consisting of silicate particles, ceramic particles. So the pattern, uh, these wax patterns are dipped multiple times in this slurry coating in order to develop sufficient thickness uh, of this coating on it. And then after the sufficient coating thickness is developed after number of iterations, uh, another stucco coating is applied. So this is this further strengthens the slurry coating. Okay. And once the mold is completed, then this uh, stucco coated mold, which has the wax patterns inside, it is heated. So here it is mentioned as autoclave. So autoclave is type of a furnace, okay, which can heat up. And what will happen on heating? All these wax patterns which are there inside, so here they are wax patterns, all these wax patterns which are inside, so they will, uh, the wax will get melted very quickly because of the heat of the furnace and these hollow patterns, hollow cavities will be left uh, made up of this stucco coating, stucco and slurry coating. This means now this hollow cavity is almost a ceramic cavity now. Okay, so this means it can contain a molten metal at a very high temperature. So super alloys, they melt in the range of uh, 1800 degree. Okay, for super alloys, I'm just giving a range. So the melting point range, it is 1800 degree. To 2000 degree. So the ceramic cavity uh, will be sufficient. Then separately, the uh, molten material that is again the super alloy is melted separately in a different furnace, and it is then poured into this uh, you know ceramic cavity, and then it is allowed to solidify. Once it is, once the solidification process is complete, we do the shake out, means we break the mold. So investment casting process, the pattern, okay, this is of wax, mold, cavity, this is of this ceramic, Specifically speaking, this is slurry plus stucco coating, stucco coating. Both of these things are expendable, means these get destroyed in the process. Means they cannot be reused again and again. So after shakeout, we get the turbine blades or the product out from here and this product or the turbine blade here specifically will be the replica of the pattern. So this is uh, like the basic summary of investment casting process, how it is done for the gas turbine blades. Okay. <coughs> Now, what are the design aspects uh, to be taken care of in case of investment casting? So investment casting, it is a very suitable process for complex casting. So we are, we are already dealing with complex castings in terms of material plus geometry, because geometry is uh, aerofoil, aerofoil shaped. Plus we are also taking care of tolerances and surface roughness. So investment casting process can produce castings with unusual internal configurations. Okay. So we can uh, manage this. Then wax pattern, it is easily removable from the mold. We know this. Okay. Then complex shapes, they can be assembled into several, several simpler shapes in this investment casting process. And practically we can produce even threads on, on uh, you know, 
uh, these materials of investment casting. Okay. So uniform sections, uh, they are, are generally preferred because abrupt changes in the sections, they, they generally uh, disrupt flow of molten material. Okay. And generally this investment casting can manage 75 millimeters of thickness with a dimension of say one meter. So this is sufficient for the gas turbine plates. Of course, it also suffices for the size range that is 0.5 to kilograms, but optimum it is less than 5 kg. So our blades, they generally weigh less than 5 kg. And if I talk of the tolerance here, so the process normally it is in this range, which is sufficient for the gas turbine blades. So now what we have with us is a cast blade made from investment casting. So investment casting is just one process to make the uh, gas turbine blade. We have another process known as vacuum casting that also I will discuss. But what is interesting in this process capability chart that as the dimension of the product, as the dimension of the product is increasing, the tolerance values also directly increasing. So this indicates very big products. If we try to make very big products, very large size products, so their tolerance value also increases. Okay. So in this, the gray area is the area where the process is normally operating. The black area, these are not achieved in general, but they can be achieved with increasing the substantial, substantially increasing the cost. Means we may have to do some secondary processing. And beyond this, the process does not operate in that range. Okay. So investment casting is also used for other applications, other products like machine tool parts, aerospace components, valve pump casings, pump pipe fittings, and so on. And these are some other applications, but this is just for your information, what other uh, products can be made from this. But again, coming back to the focus of gas turbine blades. Talking of another casting process, so another process is vacuum casting process because <laughs> we don't want any inclusions or any oxides in the cast blade because these blades, they will be experiencing very complex service environment and any inclusions, any impurities, they will lead to disaster or failure.
So I think uh, the connection was lost in between. Uh, yes, uh, our students there. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I think connection was lost because of some network uh, What uh, I have done is that uh, is this slide clear? Like the investment casting process application? Let me show the slide. Sir, by vacuum casting your voice is gone, sir. Investment casting is clear, sir. Up to this slide, everything is clear. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, no problem. So vacuum casting, then we will discuss again, but maybe in the next class. That is, I am engaging an extra class tomorrow. So at 11 o'clock, you can join. So I think uh, that is sufficient for today's lecture up to investment casting. And if there are any questions, we can discuss from the content here. Thought.